chapter 15, the best thing about us. Hours before the announcement gala, you're fussing in your room as you repack your purse for the third time. If I pack the USB drive in the front, it's easier to take away from us, but if I hide it and all the other stuff in here, I won't be able to grab it fast enough. Wow. You even make overthinking things adorable. You look over Jack, still undressed from the morning, and you can't help rolling your eyes. I don't think it's possible to overthink today. There's so much at stake. He pulls his arms around you from behind. You feel his head lean against yours, and you give yourself permission to lay your head back on his shoulder. Breathe, Luna. He begrudgingly follows instructions and melt into him as you exhale. There's only one question you need to answer right now. You know this answer. You're going to be fine. What is fueling you to kick today's ass? I'm fueled by... sheer vengeance against Jeremy. I don't know if I'm more offended that he played us or that he's getting away with it. Is he getting away with it? You turn to face Jack, iron resolve in your face. Hell no. You turn in Jack's arms to face him, and he looks you over, smiling softly. That's my girl. You feel warmth swell in your chest at those words, but before you can pull him closer, you should check on your dad. He's probably a nervous wreck, plus I got a surprise for you. A surprise, huh? You'll see. Let me guess an outfit. He pecks your cheek and ushers you downstairs. Your dad stands in front of a mirror, straightening his jacket and practicing a speech in the mirror. My life has been more uh, vibrant since the moment you walked into it, uh, and it would be easier to uh, love someone else, and then I know when things would be easy. No, darn it, I, I don't want her to think it's hard to love her. He straightens to start again, completely oblivious to your presence. Dad, you like her that much, huh? Is that too obvious? Is that a bad thing? Should I try something more aloof? Just be yourself, dude. No, oh, it's perfect. Just cut yourself some slack. You put a hand on your dad's shoulder, rubbing soft circles. Benji pads up to your dad, pawing gently at his leg. <laughs> See, practice your speech on Benji. He wants to help too. If you insist. Your dad closes his throat, kneeling down to Benji's eyes. Veronica, you deserve someone who wants to fight for you. For us, and I want to fight for us every day. Roar! Benji leans in and licks your dad's nose, making him break into a smile. See? If you're Benji approved, your speech is great. Dogs never lie. Roar! He scampers off to pick up a chew stick as your dad takes slow breaths. I'm just terrified, Junebug. Terrified of messing up. I hope you're feeling more um, towards Veronica than just fear. Drew lets out a laugh, shaking his head as he stares at the wall and smiles wistfully. That's why I'm afraid, because she makes me feel so much more than that. I just... I never have been good at putting my feelings into words. I just want her to feel loved and respected, but not pressured. To feel like I can meet her on her terms, but that she cares enough to meet me on mine. I just wish I knew how to say it. Dad. Some people are worth fighting for. You wouldn't be here, and you wouldn't be feeling this way if there wasn't something special to you about Veronica. We're willing to move mountains for the people we love, or, you know, make big heartfelt speeches at them. <laughs> That's true. All I'm saying is, focus on that. Embrace that you feel this way at all. You pull your dad into a hug, squeezing him tight. We're going to get through this, okay? Okay. You hear the clack of heels on the hardwood and turn towards the source of the sound. Not only are we getting through this, we're doing it in style. Eh, pretty. Maggie, look at you. Yes, a look at me. Well, you hear the clack of fancy shoes behind you and turn to see... Oh, okay. I'm being upstaged. Surprise. Hello, Earth Luna, come in. 
Sorry, if you want a coherent words, you're gonna have to let me reboot first. Hmm. Well, reboot quickly, because now it's your turn. He pulls out a dress box and hands it to you. You delicately lift the lid and gasp a little when you see what lies inside. No. Yes, you didn't think that we were going to roll up to a gala in your jeans, did you? Though I may have been a little selfish when picking this out, you're going to be the star of the show. I won't be able to keep my eyes off you. Yeah, but isn't it the more attention means the more chance we have to fail? Except Jack's gift, Diamond Choice. Still, after six years, surprises the shit out of me that Pixelberry thinks that getting a gift you should have to pay for. You change in your room and come back glowing. You uh, take a model spin in your gown. Oh my god. I might just cry a little. That good, huh? Jack sweeps forward to cup your cheek and takes a long, grateful kiss from your lips. The grin on his face says it all. Hmm, no, it's perfect. You're perfect. You spend a moment touching up your makeup, taking a deep breath in and out. Then you motion everyone to gather around. Alright, we've got a game plan, remember? Jack, Maggie, and I are going to get the testimonial video we filmed set up first thing. Veronica needs to see it before she gets a chance to say a single thing about her retirement. And while you're working on that, I'll bring the ca cavalry. And then we'll take down Jeremy once and for all. This is a make it or break it moment. Let's do this, team. You and Jack make it into the gala filled with two's cousin employees, clients, investors, and guests. Maggie joins you a minute later. Nice distraction at the door, Maggie. The plan worked perfectly. You can tell they're kind of rushing this. It's a good thing you two still have your two co's badges. Mmm, it's a good thing I'm still the smooth talker I always was. You can't help noticing the eyes turning towards you as whispers exchange over your outfit. You know, for a second there, I thought all the attention my dress was getting would blow our cover. You know how in magic, the right hand does the trick while the left hand distracts? You're the left hand. Just as you get your bearings, you hear the reporters in front of the stage. Is the camera ready? We're going live for Veronica's announcement in 10 minutes. That's not a lot of time. We need to get the USB stick to the tech booth stat. I'll distract the tech guy to buy you guys time. Hurry. You and Maggie rush backstage and beeline for the laptop at the tech booth, fishing in your purse for the USB stick. Once this is done, the hardest part is over. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Then I'll make you sure you stop you now. Jeremy stands behind you, glowering between you and Maggie. You pull your hand out of your purse, the USB stick, still buried in sign. I knew you were going to try and sneak in and ruin everything. You didn't seem smart enough to walk away quietly. Something tells me I'm not the one who missed missing smarts here. We made a deal. Yeah, well, it isn't a very good one. You protectively pull Maggie behind you. You feel her slide a hand in your purse and tap something on your phone. Keep talking, Jeremy. You're recording this conversation. This is the chance to influence Jer what Jeremy says to incriminate himself. You need to leave him now. Not happening, not without knowing why you're doing all this. You planted a spy cam in the doll you gave me. Out of everything I managed to pull off, you're asking that? That's just the tip of the iceberg. You care about your clients so much, of course you believe the creepy ventriloquist would buy you an ugly doll. As for planting a spy cam, all it took was a simple internet search and a few videos to figure out how. Not even hard. I guess you want me to congratulate you on your skills? I still don't get it, though. You did all that horrible stuff, and for what? Come on. You couldn't have gotten this far without figuring it out. We had more important things to do than think about why you were in our way. But then I'll spell it out for you. I'll make sure to use small words. Our family's full of lawyers, doctors, and bankers. Veronica was a black sheep for going off and becoming a matchmaker. I was tossed from the family business to family business like a game of hot potato. Nobody wanted me. I wonder why. Veronica took me in pity. Or took me out of pity. But I didn't want pity. I wanted respect. The only path of respect was to inherit a legacy and prove all of our family wrong. How is leaking Veronica's divorce and recording me and Jack in secret supposed to get respect? 
because I was almost there. Bronica said she'd make me a matchmaker soon, and then she gave it to you. Just in time for the competition, you stole my spot, my chance. And then you even went so far as to fool me with a stupid, secret, fake message about catering. You toyed with me like it was a game. Bloody sirens. Gee, it sure sucks to be manipulated, doesn't it? I can only imagine what that feels like. Why are you so desperate to be a matchmaker in the first place? You don't seem to like love. It never is about being matchmaker. I should be CEO after her, not anyone else. I'm her blood. I needed to get rid of the two of you to show her I was the only option left. Nobody else is good enough for this company. Not even her. You ruined her, too. You leaked her divorce to the press. The time was up. I'd been waiting too long. <clears throat> How long have you been planning the league? That hidden camera paid off perfectly. I learned about the divorce. I realized I had the perfect scapegoat. I could leave the divorce, pin it on you and Jack, and then you'd be out of my head for good. You betrayed Veronica. You threw her under the bus. How can you begin to think you deserve her company after that? Because no matter what I did, she only looked at you and Jack. I would have left her company burn to ash before I let someone else have it. Jeremy. <clears throat> Veronica deserves so much better than you. She gave you a place when the rest of the family turned you away. And this is how you repay her? Don't worry, she'll thank me soon enough when I'm running a company. Security! A burly security guard rushes around the corner. Take these two away. They came here to sabotage the event. Understood. The guard grabs you and Maggie by the arm and starts dragging you towards the exit. Quick, use some kung fu or karate or something, you know? <clears throat> you have to understand, Jeremy is up to some bad stuff and we're running out of time to stop him. Give us a chance to explain. I don't get paid to ask questions, lady. Now, unless Miss Roberts herself tells me to stop, we're calling the cops. Leave those two alone. You whip your head around to see Veronica standing beside Jack, her eyes wide. You know what? I'm not getting in the middle of this. <laughs> I mean, you just did say, if she said, leave them alone. Eat words. Your guard releases you, and you hurry towards Veronica. Thank you, Veronica. You have no idea. No, I have some idea. Jack has been convincing me to hear the three of you out. Follow me. Veronica pulls the three of you into the hotel lobby next to the event space, tight-lipped. Very well, you have five minutes to tell me what you came here to say. Her eyes meet yours reluctantly, the hurt from your last conversation still plainly there. Veronica, I'm sorry for what you've been through. The divorce, public reveal, us leaving, I can't imagine what you're feeling right now. You're right, you can't. Focus on what you can do. Tell me why you're here. Well, I mean, we have evidence to show that, you know, Jeremy's an asshole. Jeremy's been manipulating you and us and to keep us quiet. You can't go through with handing him your company. What in the world are you implying? We have an evidence that Jerry, Jeremy was the one who leaked your divorce to the press. A ringing silence follows. You can barely hear the buzz of a party goers from inside the gala. What did you just say? You take your phone out of your purse and hold it towards Veronica. I just recorded Jeremy admitting to it. We've known about it for a while, and that's why we had to leave Tusco. Why? Why would you leave instead of telling me? Why hold on to it for so long? They literally couldn't go to you. Jeremy was threatening them. He secretly recluded Luna and I and used it to blackmail us because... because we've been seeing each other. Romantically, and after what happened to Keith and Casey, we knew we'd get disqualified. Oh my god. This whole time, of course you brought Luna as a date. Gods, I've been awful. I mean, I agree. It wasn't ideal for us, but no. Uh, but this wouldn't have been the problem if Jeremy hadn't meddled. If everything you're saying is true, why? Why would he do all that? Answers are in the recording, Veronica. She reaches to press the play button, but she hesitates. She looks into your eyes, and the der determination she sees seems to convince her. After everything I've done for him, everything I gave, 
He's here at the party. If everything you say is true, he should answer for his own words. I mean, we can watch him dissolve into a puddle when he realizes how screwed he is? After everything he's put us through, I think we've earned the right to uh, get a few words in before he's punished. No, listen, listen. We go for his kneecaps, okay? We go for his knees. I have a few things I'd like to say. As do I. You imagine all the things you'd like to say to Jeremy, but best of all, you imagine him stammering for mercy in front of Veronica. Diamond choice. You deserve the final word before you decide what to do with him. You're right. Veronica texts Jeremy to meet her in the lobby, and he appears a few minutes later. I would have humiliated him in front of everyone inside. Veronica, great question about the walk-up music. I had some confetti prepared. He stops dead when he sees you, Jack and Maggie. I thought I had you all thrown out. Yes, and I decided I want them to stay. It turns out they had some very important things to say. I caught them in the tech booth. They were trying to sabotage my big nine. Oh, please. You know, because she's the one retiring? Or has that escaped you in your narcissistic victory lab? How dare you? I have nothing but respect for Veronica. Really? Would you, uh, do you want to prove that? You reveal the phone, press the play button on the audio file. As soon as Jeremy hears the conversation, his face goes cold. You, you recall, you recall to that. Shh, save questions for the end. Let's, let's all listen in now. Of course you'd believe the creepy ventriloquist would buy you an ugly nose for planting a spy cam all it took was simply an internet search and a few videos to figure out how. How could you have compelled? What could have compelled you to do such a despicable thing, Jeremy? Oh, the answer's coming. I was tossed from the family business to family business, like a game of hot potato. Nobody wanted me. I wonder why. Veronica to took me in out of pity, but I didn't want pity, I wanted respect. Her face reddens with fury, and you pause the recording as she confronts Jeremy. So that's what you thought I was doing, pitying you? Veronica, no, I... Of all people, I thought you would understand how vicious our family could be. I took you in because you're family and I cared about you. But apparently that didn't matter. Of course, a dick like you would find something malicious in Veronica, of all people. L L Luna's playing that out of context. Yeah, 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 yeah. Great. So if I play more, it should clear things up, right, Jeremy? No, 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 no. It's too late. You've already hit the play button, Jeremy. Clasped his hands on both sides of his head. Yeah, because if he can't hear it, no one can hear it, right? It never was about being matchmaker. I could be CEO after her, not anyone else. I'm a blood. I need to get rid of the two of you. Show her I was the only one option left. Nobody else is good enough for this company. Not even her. You ruined her too. You leaked her divorce to the press. The time was up. I'd been waiting long enough. Oh, dear. The hidden camera paid off perfectly. I learned about the divorce, realized I had the perfect scapegoat. And I could leak the divorce, pin it on you, and then you'd be out of my hair for good. No matter what I did, she'd still looked at you and Jack. I would have left her company to burn to ash before I let someone else take her. You stare at Jeremy's speechless, horror-stricken face. That enough context for you, buddy? You, you, how dare you, 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 you. I know. How dare I defend myself and oust you as the dirtbag you are? Yeah, people don't get that. I literally live with a person like that. Like, they try and do, like, the, the whole gas, like, lighting thing. And, yeah, no, they... They think they are the perfect thing while they could simultaneously be twisting the knife in your bag. Veronica clears her throat and Jeremy gulps. Sweat beads on his forehead as Veronica glares at him. You would let Tuzco burn before someone else took over. Veronica, please. I... Don't listen to them. They, they pressured me into this. Did they also pressure you into following me to get tickets to the opera? Or rec recording me and Luna in secret so you would leak what we said to the press? A bead of sweat trickles down Jeremy's temple. He reaches for Veronica's hand, but she flicks it away with enough force that Jeremy winces. 
You know, the family warned me about you. They said it would be impossible to make a decent man out of you. I thought it was because they were cold and monstrous, but it turns out they were right for once. You can't do this to me. I've worked too long and hard for all this to end here. No, you haven't. You used bad faith to cull my team until all that was left was you. That's not work. That's sadism. Veronica looks between you, Jack, and Maggie. He's getting fired, rest assured. But I have to ask if you want to press charges for harassment and stalking he committed. Yes, I want him charged with everything. Nobody should do what he's done and get away with it. I want the book thrown at him. Hold on, I have a dictionary in my purse. Is it big enough, though? Is it like a big old Webster's Dictionary from, like, the library that's, like, God knows how many pages long? And, and you know what? Actually, no, get the encyclopedias so we can throw all those at them, too. There's, like, what, 50 of those things now? Pretty sure she meant the metaphorical book, Mary Poppins. But, I mean, either. I'm not against it, either. This, this can't be happening. It, 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 this, this is a bad dream. That's all it is. Good thing I know someone who can pinch you. Security! Escort this man from the premises immediately. The greater guard starts stalking toward uh, Jeremy to escort him out. He stares up at you in panic and rage. You... you were just a bartender. Yeah, underestimating was your first and last mistake. I highly recommend staying far away from me and the people I love, or hell, even vaguely tolerate from here on out. Whatever witty retort Jeremy tries to find dies on his lips. Guards drag him away. Jack puts his arms around you. I'm glad we never have to put up with that again. As am I to think he had me fooled for so long. Well, family do that to you. They really do. The anger on her face flows over into something more vulnerable. Thank you, all three of you, for not giving up on me, especially you, Luna, and you, Jack. I am ashamed that I thought the worst of you when you quit. We had to get out of Jeremy's radar in order to help you. We only regret uh, that it meant putting distance between ourselves and you. I understand why it was necessary, and I hold nothing against you. Suddenly, the music in the ballroom grows louder. Veronica sucks in her breath, face turning panic as an announcer's voice rings out. And now it's time to hear from the woman of the hour, Veronica Roberts. Oh no, I'm not ready. Jeremy ruined everything. It's not ruined. We have something. Miss Roberts, it's time for your announcement. This way, please. The security guard leads away a stunned Veronica, still reeling from what just happened with Jeremy. Dang it, let's head out there. She needs us. It's easy. We bamboozle her while she's doing her speech, play the thing, and make her feel teary-eyed with happiness versus sorrow. You watch her climb the steps of the stage and take the microphone, eyes wide as she stares into the crowd. Hello, I... Thank you for coming. Today is... Today is quite a day. This isn't good. She hasn't had time to recover from learning the truth about Jeremy. You and Jack slip into the back room as Veronica struggles to say something to the crowd, which starts to buzz with impatience. Suddenly, a reporter steps forward, followed by a crew of cameras that all aim up at Veronica. Veronica, we heard you would be announcing your successor tonight. Is that true? I... I was planning to, but... Maggie, we need one of your crazy ideas, stat. Maggie? She's gone. Suddenly, the lights dim, and the screen behind Veronica comes to life. The video you and Jack filmed starts playing. Veronica, before I met you, I wondered if I would ever really be happy. I was so afraid of making myself vulnerable to someone, but you helped me see that the right person would love my vulnerabilities. I was a fool, thought chasing girls all day and night was the same thing as love. We just got to witness the birth of our first grandchild. That never would have happened without you bringing us together. Every day I wake up to the face of the woman I love. That's because you cared about not only about finding our matches, but helping us find ourselves. Oh my word, Beth Anton, they remember. But what's going on? 
You and Jack share a look and then squeeze through the crowd. You sweep on stage to surprise all of Tusco's employees and reporters. Glancing backstage, you see Maggie at the tech booth. She gives you a, a double thumbs up. You got this. All right, good evening, Tuzco, and all of Veronica's passionate fans. I'm so glad many of you have come to show Veronica your support tonight. But before we look to the future, we'd like to celebrate the legacy of New York's best matchmaker on the night she deserves it the most. Luna Jack. You turn to Veronica, unable to contain your grin. Veronica, you... ...brought love to thousands of couples. The last few days, I've been lucky enough to meet so many couples you helped find love, and I confirm what I already knew. You understand what makes two people compatible better than anyone I've met. Jack steps up beside you, grinning across the crowd. It's easy to see why Veronica is so good at cultivating love in the ones in the lives of others. She exudes warmth and comfort to everyone she talks to, but don't just take our word for it. We have some very special guests here to prove it. Suddenly, a crowd of couples burst through the back doors, led by your father. Good job, everyone. Come on in this way. Drew, what is... She realizes the crowd is full of couples. She's matched, and she gasps. You're all here. You came. Of course we did. How would we not? When we heard you were returned, we had to come and help you celebrate. Galley invitees break into a cheer and move aside to let the couples through to the front. Veronica's eyes swim with tears. It's so wonderful to see all of you. Why don't we hear a few words from them? Peter, want to tell us your story of Veronica? I'll never forget it. I was a wreck when I went into Tuzco, freshly divorced in a job I hated. You didn't send me on dates until you made sure I was confident in myself again. And that all made the difference. If I had met Sally without those interventions, I don't think she'd be my wife today. Thank you, Veronica. Oh, Peter, I was happy to do it. Veronica wipes a few tears, but she's smiling wide. Practically glowing, you look around for another one of Veronica's past clients to call on. The man who won the lottery, a woman in her fourth and final marriage. We're just getting warmed up. Yvette, why don't you share your story? Oh, gladly. I came to Two's Co. when I was out of options. It was after my third divorce, and my friends and family had given up. They said I just... which... I would just throw love away as soon as I had it. But Veronica knew I had a chance. I just needed to find the right person. I've been with Scott for ten years now, and we'd never have met if it wasn't Veronica. After all these years, so many of you remember. The video continues on behind you, footage rolling from Anne and Calvin's interview. I expected uh, that working with a matchmaker would be like the business transactions I was used to. Veronica was anything but. I wasn't used to being opening... Well, I wasn't used to opening up to people, but I felt so comfortable with her. I could tell she cared. It was kind of like therapy, but not scary. So I'd just like to say thank you, Veronica, for helping me through that process. You helped us be brave enough to completely change the course of our lives. You helped us find each other. Veronica near tears when Annie and Calvin whoop from the crowd. Thank you, Veronica! We've never been happier. You come forward and put a hand on Veronica's shoulder and she beams at you. You and Jack put all this together after everything you went through. Well, it's because of how much you meant to us. Of course we did. You deserve to know how much love you've put into this world. And after all the giving you've done, it's time you had love of your own. Someone who... sees you for the amazing woman you are. Stole the words right out of my mouth. Veronica turns and gasps as your dad walks on stage. Drew... Don't worry, Veronica. I'm not here to steal any limelight. Tonight is yours, and rightfully so. I just wanted to tell you what a remarkable woman you are, and how I feel about you. The rest of the room has gone completely silent. Veronica's eyes are locked on Drew's. I thought you said we weren't good at big speeches, or you weren't. <laughs> They're my specialty, but the right people in life make you want to get out of your comfort zone. He reaches forward and takes her hands. 
Veronica, when I met you I was only looking for love, because I had given up on finding it. Love like that is so rare, I didn't think I had a chance of being the lucky sap that lightning strikes twice. And then you walked into my bar. Suddenly lightning had struck twice. Veronica, you are a brilliant, vivacious woman who deserves the best that the world has to offer. I don't know if I'm the best, but I'll work my ass off every day to try and be. Because that's what you do when you love someone. The crowd turns to a chorus of awes. You stand with bated breath as Veronica blinks back tears. You're wrong, Drew. You are the best this world has to offer. Just the way you are, I'd be stupid not to see it. Because I love you too. Your dad's eyes get glassy. He beams at Veronica, pulls her in and kisses her as he th she throws her arms around his neck. Yes, get it! But not in front of me, preferably. <laughs> the crowd cheers as they separate. Your dad has the biggest grin on him that you've seen in a while. And so does Veronica. She grins from your dad to you and then out to the crowd. I want to thank all of you for reminding me how much I enjoyed helping you all find love and you reminding me that I deserve love as well. Now that I found it, I can retire happily. I'm thrilled to announce that Two's Co's new CEO is the young woman who introduced us. Get over here, Luna Harper. Oh my god. Cameras flash as reporters flock to the stage. You don't move until you feel a gentle push against your back. Jack's voice is warm in your ear. This is your moment. Go bask in the glory. You stumble to the center stage. You are bombarded by questions. Miss Harper, what are your plans for the company? Our research shows you spent 10 years as a bartender. How will that help you lead a company? You look around helplessly until your gaze lands on Jack, who nods at you with a smile. You take a deep breath and look back at the reporters. As CEO, I will make matchmaking more accessible. I spent my bartending years unofficially matchmaking patrons for years, but most New Yorkers have to struggle on dating apps. I believe that everyone should have a chance to develop a loving companionship, and I want Two's Co. to provide that. Veronica walks right up beside you, putting an arm on your, around your shoulders. Whatever direction Luna takes the company from here, I have full faith in her skills. If I could get another question in... Miss, Miss Harper, over here, please. Can you smile into the camera, young lady? As the reporters swarm you with questions, you catch Jack slipping in the back of the ballroom, smiling back at you. Excuse me, everyone. If you could just... Hey! Uh-oh. The crowd goes silent, focuses on Maggie. If you have any questions for your new CEO, you can submit them to me, and we'll send you statements tomorrow. Now, if you form a line... Before a line tentatively starts forming, you lean down onto Maggie to whisper. Tomorrow, we'll talk about giving you a big, big raise. Oh, I know. I already scheduled a meeting. Now, go get your man, Tiger. I love that phrase, Tiger. You slip from her side to walk over to Jack. Before you can even say hi, he's already pulled his arms around your waist and kisses you deeply. By the time you part, you realize just how many people are looking and how it doesn't matter. I can't tell you how long I've been waiting to do that. What? Kiss me in front of your uh, our co-workers? And now nothing can uh, can happen to us. Nothing, huh? Kiss me again. Let's be extra sure. Yes, ma'am. Jack's hands squeeze tighter along your waist and curves. His lips along against yours, growing hungrier with every second. When the kiss breaks, you let out a ragged gasp and tighten your grip along your shoulders, your forehead knocking into his. Well, has HR zip line from the ceiling to tell us we're fired? Nope. Don't think anyone's firing you now, CEO. You hesitate when you hear him call you CEO, your smile faltering for a moment. About that. How are you feeling, knowing that it's over, knowing that I won, and that you... Didn't. It's okay. You don't need to tiptoe around it, really. I'm happy for you, Luna. So happy seeing the woman I love achieve her dream makes me prouder than uh, I could put into words. 
Even though it was your dream job, after all your work? God, could you stop rubbing it in? Jack shakes his head and tightens his hold around your waist. Luna, my dream was great when I was alone. When I had nothing in my life except for my work. But being with you, it's opened me up to everything I've been missing. All those late nights, long hours, didn't fill the void in my heart. You did. Jack. Yeah, I'm not CEO. I can live with that. Maybe the life I want now means ending the day uh, a little early. Being with you. Jack, you're a part of my dreams now, too. I promise, spending time with you, thinking about life together, that's what I want, too. And for a moment, Jack doesn't quite meet your eyes. When they come back to yours, they look a little glossier than before. Damn it, now look what you've turned me into. Suddenly I care about the domestic life and not working myself to death. Me. It looks good on you. Who knows, you might even like it. <sighs> Just don't tell my improv students. It'll ruin my cred. <laughs> you shiver in his arms, and for a moment, it all hits you. It really courses through you. It's really done. This is really happening. Sure is. You know what that means? Um, beyond living my dream job and getting to kiss you whenever I want? Mm, it's time to celebrate in style. He reaches into his pocket and takes out a room key for the hotel you're in on the very top floor. There's a lot of people excited to congratulate you on your win. They'll still be here in an hour or two. He ducks to brush his lips up your neck before whispering in your ear, making you shiver. Right now, I want to take the victory lap we both deserve alone in a swaggy hotel room. Diamond choice. Celebrate privately. As much as I'd like to. You guys know. You know YouTube and the little BS, you know. So, yeah, let's go. That sounds wonderful, but I really want to enjoy the moment here with everyone else. Oh, fine. Be the selfless leader and don't have stone with your handsome boyfriend in the middle of your own party. Don't worry. We'll be celebrating our way before the night is over. I'll hold you to that. Let's get back to your party, boss. When you return to the party, the Jack remains as lively and active as you left it. Veronica walks over to you and arm in arm with your dad. Well, don't you two look positively radiant? I'd say we have plenty of reason to be. We were gonna turn in a little early, Junebug, to talk about everything. We're like Pound Chicken Wow Wow. That's the maximum amount of detail I want to hear, thanks. We just wanted to congratulate you again on our way out. You've done good, kiddo. We'll start the official transition first thing Monday. Enjoy yourself. As they walk away, you look up at Jack and raise your brow. Shall we? Mm, yeah, yeah, we can start the victory lab. You head into the throng of people, ready to spend the rest of your night accepting congratulations. Later that night, the party is winding down. Many guests and employees have headed home. Your cheeks are sore from smiling. We still have the hotel room for the night. Mm, just upstairs. No, I don't think I'm ready to sleep just yet. Just as you grin, you lean in for a kiss or a quarter from earlier walks up. Hello, Miss Harper. I know you're going to leave soon, but I um, hope I can have one more moment of your time. Oh, all right. Just make it quick. It's been a long night. Interviews from other twos co's say that the last stage of the competition was a fierce battle between you and Jack Monroe. What are your plans for Jack Monroe now that the competition is over? I'm going to fire him. Seriously. Jack will be my second in command. Jack is a very passionate about Tuzco. I would be a fool not to let him collaborate on our future as a company. Actually about them. You glance over to Jack, he gives you a smile, but it fades as he turns towards the reporter. I have an announcement for my own to make. I'm going to tender my resignation from Tuzco. Uh... I was, I was joking about firing you, dude. I was, I was joking. Excuse me? Luna, we work really well together, but I've come to realize that we work best when we have to beat one another. I'm starting my own matchmaking company. I'm gonna be your number one competition. You what? Okay. Four months later. 
You walk into your favorite spot in town where you and Jack are meeting for lunch and see him already seated at a window table. He looks up as you approach, a smug smirk spreads over his lips, even as his eyes warm. Mm, two minutes late. You know, Tusco last CEO was much more punctual. Oh, shut up. I happen to be finishing up a very successful meeting, thank you very much. He's lying in the chair across from him, and he raises his eyebrows. Oh yeah, how successful. Wouldn't you like to know? The waiter appears and sets your lunch on the table. The usual spaghetti bellinis for Luna and chicken piccata for Jack. As Julian walks away, Jack waggles his eyebrows at you. Free lunch in return for a glimpse into his co boardroom. The press would have a field day if they found out the Cupid's Touch CEO tried to bribe industry secrets out of Luna Harbor. Speaking of the press, Jack takes out a magazine showing you a blurb on the front cover. Matchmaker Industries' biggest rivals, also lovers. How do they do it? They should have interviewed us. Then they'd have learned about the many, many ways we do it. On many surface... You step on his toes under the table. <laughs> I don't know why I put up with you. Because I'm ridiculously handsome, funny, smart, oh, oh, and persistent. And I butter you up by sending you nice bouquets at work. Your banter dies down a bit as you both dig into your food. As your plate starts to empty, you clear your throat. Maggie says you tried to bribe her over to keep its touch again. That is a hefty accusation, Miss Harper. I simply let it slip that I might know a guy who knows a guy who knows a guy who could get her hooked up with a flamethrower dealer if she joined Tubit's Cutch. Tubit's Cutch. Okay. All right. Cupid's Touch. Hi, words. How are you? I use them well. You're never going to steal my best matchmaker from me. Maggie knows the meaning of loyalty. Unlike your lousy boyfriend who jumped ship to establish his own company from the moment you were named CEO. Laughing, you hook your ankle around Jack's beneath the table. Yes, exactly like him. You share a heated glance, and then you both take out your phones at the same time. You pull up matchmaking spreadsheets, tallying each of your total matches made compared to your match retention. A score is at the bottom of the page. Looks like this lousy boyfriend is ahead by two points. I will get to name our dog. You just wait. Guybrush Threpwood will be the most majestic golden retriever there ever was. You will never name our dog that because there is no way in hell I'm letting you win this competition. You've got until the end of the year to prove it. Chuckling, you lean over the table, cup his cheek, and brush a soft kiss to his lips. Oh, Jack, we both know. I don't need that long to beat you. <laughs> Glancing at your phone, you stand up. I gotta get back to work. You know how it is. So many important, successful meetings to run. Oh, yeah. I gotta get back to half a dozen of those myself. He takes your hand and you smile at him. Heart lighter and fuller than it has been in months, in years, even. See you at home. Always. Thank you for playing Miss Match. You've reached the end of the book. This book was a labor of love for many people, and we hope you enjoyed it. All right, let's get to it. So without further ado, you know what to do. It's on the screen. Make sure to like the video, share the video, and share the channel even. And make sure to subscribe. It'd be great to have you here. So without further ado, let's dive into it. Um, I liked it. It was okay. Um, it was a lot better than the bleh that we've been reading lately, okay? I know you guys like it because you, you're dirty pervs. But, you know, I love each and every one of you. No, seriously. I kid, but at the same time, Pixelberry, I wish you'd do a little bit better and, uh, you know, not stoop to other visual novels. You used to have a lot bigger fan base. And guess what? Think about the revenue. When Pixelberry first came out, you know, with Most Wanted and Freshman and all the other books, they actually were, like, top visual novel app. Now, now they're not nobody, and they think, for whatever bloody reason, that it's because of the, the bounce chicka wow wow on other apps, and yet that could not be further from the truth. You know, they sit there and they set talk about numbers and everything else, and weird, weird how the numbers and me remembering you guys used to have millions of users on this app, and you guys used to have a lot more writers than you have now as well. And you've had a lot of successful writers that actually wrote some of your most successful books leave the company to bigger and better things.
and they ironically left the company to also go to some of those other apps as well. So you're sitting here saying, well, the numbers digress and they, they disagree with you and they argue with you. That's not entirely true, don't you think? I'm just saying. There's a lot. And it all adds up. Those are the numbers. I did enjoy the book. It was fun. And uh, opposites do attract. That's the thing with relationships and whatnot. Um, opposites do attract. Someone can like coffee, and then the other person can not like coffee. It's perfectly acceptable. That's the thing. There are better and bigger things in this world than just <laughs> stupid disagreements. So, without further ado, love your beautiful faces, and uh, I'll catch you all next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.